Aloha and welcome to Island Connections. I'm Brahim Aude. Islands in crisis. Uh, this is a topic, uh, timely topic, and we have uh, three guests who will uh, help us discuss uh, this topic. Akwan McElrath, she's a retired social worker, uh, ILW, and a retired member of the Boards of Regents, University of Hawaii. Welcome, AQ. Thank you. John Wittick, uh, from, uh, he's an activist, uh, community activist, and also a lecturer at Ethnic Studies at the University of Hawaii and also at Honolulu Community College. Welcome, John. And Bart Dame, he's uh, an activist, Democratic Party activist. Yeah. So he's very active uh, in the Democratic Party, it seems to me. So anyway, uh, what we want to discuss uh, in the beginning is that um, the past uh, several months uh, have been uh, very uh, important in terms of uh, development in Hawaii, and also this development in Hawaii in terms of the politics, the economics, and so forth are a result of global changes, etc. And then with all these kinds of changes in the political economy and society, we have presidential elections. We have the democratic primaries uh, still ongoing. Uh, the, De the Republicans, uh, basically, they have McCain as the, uh, you know, Republican uh, Party uh, 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 presidential, uh, uh, you know, candidate. And he's going to go against either uh, Hillary Clinton or uh, Barack Obama. So given all that, um, AQ, you have been active uh, in the legislature and um, lobbying and so forth for, uh, on the questions of health and so on. So how do you uh, see the um, social climate in Hawaii? And how do you see the uh, legislature responding to this in this uh, session? Well, I think we're in a recession. I don't think the legislature is doing the very best job that it can do. If, for example, we have Aloha Airlines going off um, the flying schedule, it really means that we are having problems with our flying system. I rather suspect that it's because of the nature of capitalism that Aloha Airlines finds itself the way it is. You notice that the legislature had tried to do something about bailing out Aloha Airlines and weren't able to do so. They are also talking about putting aside X millions of dollars in federal funds for that rainy day and uh, the Department of Social services is opposed to it because mm -hmm. they say they've been spending money to take care of young people in trouble. And if they were to keep it in reserve, what can they use? Mm -hmm. And so there's no doubt in my mind that we're working towards a recession that is on us already. And unless we do something about getting people to understand why we are in that particular situation, I don't think that we will do any better than we did in 1929, except that a man on the white horse came through. His name was Frederick oh, Franklin, Franklin uh, Delano uh, Roosevelt. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's yeah. the, the 70th, 70th anniversary mm -hmm. of that particular period right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, in fact, um, uh, mentioning something about uh, it's in the nature of capitalism and this is a consequence of capitalist development, etc. cetera, um, one of the professors in my department, Noel Kent, he's, uh, he, I was talking with him today and he was talking about uh, Aloha Airlines. Uh, basically, it is because of uh, the airline business, which is, uh, you know, uh, operating in the context of the ca capitalist relations of production. And uh, it is a shame that this, is th this thing is happening to a lot of people who believed in the system, but the system really failed them. So where do we go from here? Uh, John, I uh, saw a uh, letter of yours um, mm -hmm. in the uh, advertiser, right? And uh, so could you say something about uh, that and also mm -hmm. comment on what uh, AQ was sure. talking about? I agree with AQ. I think we are in a recession already, and it's um, it's deepening. What amazes me, I think, on, on the Aloha Airline thing, ATA, and a lot of um, in the s systemic wide inflation throughout the economy is 
hardly anyone is pointing to part of the capitalist system, which is the oil monopolies. Mm -hmm. In the national administration and the lingual administration, there's a lot of kowtowing to free market. But you have a, uh, you know, you have this very unfree market in big oil, and the huge mega billions of profits unjustified uh, that they can't even explain, except, you know, at business, mm -hmm. free market. Uh, people need gas, so we're right to charge uh, whatever we can get. When you look at the effect on the airline business in general besides the deregulation uh, of it that has been in effect, is you, you see that uh, oil jet fuel prices have increased in five years, almost five-fold, from about 65, 70 cents in 2003 to now over $3.50. Of course, for working families, they're facing tripling of prices at the pump for coming to town, for working, for getting to work, getting home from work. This is devastating. I know families are paying 300 or 400 a month now just for uh, commuting to and from work. Mm -hmm. The airline companies, what amazes me is that there's no one saying, I think the Aloha Airline Executive blame government inaction. The airline employees rightly probably blame mismanagement. But what about this huge giant out there, the bully, in the pathetic uh, Congress is looking at taxing their excessive profits, but why not put them under control? You know, FDR, you mentioned Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Um, why not challenge them? Why not nationalize them? When workers went on strike in the coal mines, they nationalized, they sent the National Guard in. Uh, why not threaten? And the, of course, the reason is the government is in hock to big oil. They're owned by big oil. The Bush cronies in the cabinet are big oil. They all come from oil. Many of them come from oil companies. Lingle, I'm surprised, hasn't raised a peep really about gas prices. She, she opposed caps. At least Cayetano and company would all their other flaws. They, they actually sued oil companies. And for a while, prices were held down. But where is the government, where are the people, the, to me the people have to demand. We have electricity and phone bill, uh, phone rates under PUC. Why not put gas rates? Mm -hmm. I mean, why not begin thinking much more clearly? Of course, getting off the dependence of oil is important too. You know, Hawaii could be the leader in the world in solar energy, mm -hmm. in electrical cars, and uh, you know, we could be doing that. Where is the imagination, where is the leadership? Yeah. But, you know, just to play the devil's advocate, uh, some of the old executives uh, were testifying a week in ago Congress, or so in yes. Congress. Mm -hmm. And uh, to the uh, question as to why you're making these, uh, you know, uh, big profits, mm -hmm. high profits, said, so, well, you know, we plow back a lot of those into research and development mm -hmm. to, to have more oil and this and that, you know. Uh, and then, uh, to my, uh, not to my surprise, but uh, it was disappointing in a sense that uh, con uh, the Congress uh, person um, who was asking that question mm -hmm. Uh, just Talked let him it. off the hook, you know. I mean, <laughs> so it's amazing, you know. Yes. I mean, uh, but uh, uh, would you say something about that and continue? <laughs> sure, on I'll jump it. in. <laughs> Actually, be before we began, uh, I was mm. talking with AQ, and I said mm. I was going to agree with everything she said, mm. and she said, "No, I don't want you to do that." Uh. And so now I'm going to disagree. Uh. Um, there's no question that that we're operating inside of a capitalist economy, mm. and there are tendencies in capitalism of like tendencies towards monopoly. Mm -hmm. But one needn't break completely from capitalism to have some, re some degree of regulation, mm -hmm. to have antitrust legislation. Mm -hmm. Antitrust is like a forgotten concept under both the Democrats and the Republicans. They haven't made an effort. What's happening is that companies are gobbling up other companies and we're getting so that every, almost every major industry is being controlled by a handful of companies. Mm -hmm. And they can set prices. They can do it with airlines. They can do it uh, with you know with everything now as far as the profits of the oil companies there were windfall profit taxes back in the yeah. 70s or so why is that subject not being broached now mm -hmm. why is it that if the conditions of the world economy and political crises are jacking up the price of oil why is it that the oil companies should be able to get extract all that money out of our pockets and put it in their pockets rather than recognize this as a freak phenomenon, they shouldn't be the beneficiaries, it should go towards some sort of planned purpose, which is for the benefit of all society. 
So I think there should be windfall profit taxes. Mm -hmm. We don't have to overthrow capitalism in order to do that. Mm -hmm. But the Democrats have to start getting a little more creative and a little less dependent upon corporate contributions in order to be able to do that. Yeah. That's one mm -hmm. of the very big things is mm -hmm. big corporations can contribute as much money as they want behind the door, in front of the door, up the stairs, everywhere. They can mm -hmm. continue to do, give those monies to politicians. And what politician would say, oh, I'm against it because he wants to be reelected again. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, but the same way the big tobacco was mm -hmm. uh, blamed and targeted, big oil should mm -hmm. also be targeted because well, not only is it addictive, and, they, mm -hmm. and I'm sure they're spending some of their money to prevent alternative mm -hmm. technologies, if not to control them. But um, why not, you know, you've got to take them out of the financing of campaigns. You've got to mm -hmm. free the electoral process in order to do the, some of the things Bart is talking about. Yeah. You're going to have to take it away from the interests that dominate it. Yeah. Well, and the fact mm -hmm. that they say we spend the money, our profits, on research. research. Well, my goodness, they don't spend money on solar. They don't spend money on wind. As a matter of fact, every possibility that we have looked into, they have killed. Yeah, the, the other thing, one of the things they were saying, these executives, is that uh, we have to be realistic that for the foreseeable future, at least, there will be 80% of uh, energy coming out of oil, and then there's coal, mm -hmm. and there's nuclear energy. So you have to have like this uh, co uh, yeah, combination of resources to work together in an efficient manner. Of course, you know, economically, they say efficiency is very important and so on. I think there's mm. a real danger that the way that the environmental crisis is being framed is as a carbon problem. Mm. And they're setting up incentives, and they're structuring the incentive system such that nuclear power mm -hmm. is becoming a solution which satisfies those mm -hmm. criteria. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm happy to support Barack Obama, but Barack Obama has been getting uh, lots of money from the nuclear I industry. And I have a lot of concerns that mm -hmm. a lot of leading environmentalists have been already co-opted to say that nuclear power is a clean Absolutely. alternative. Mm -hmm. And that's a risk. We have to pay, start paying attention to that. Yeah. And uh, so this is uh, very important because it talks about uh, not only the hypocrisy, uh, but the opportunism of the politicians. They would do whatever it takes to make sure they have constituencies who can, like, contribute uh, funds for their campaigns, etc. And uh, I'm sure <coughs> in the, um, for the general election, the run for the White House is going to be probably more expensive than <laughs> what we have seen uh, so far, mm -hmm. which uh, makes uh, democracy a sham because, you know, the more money you have, the more, um, you know, ads you can have, commercials mm -hmm. and so forth. And uh, so well, where are the um, ordinary people like us uh, from all of that? I mean... Mm -hmm. Well, you know, John referred to the fact that it costs uh, three times as much for some friends of his to travel from one part of the country, uh, of the island, to work mm -hmm. on another part. Well, have we found out, Have do we realize, for example, that the cost of a college education now is so high that you can't even send your kid, even though you save your money? The cost of living has gone up about 7%. I go to the market in order to do the shopping for the family. And I'm absolutely amazed at how mm -hmm. the price of milk has gone up. I've used powdered milk for many, many years because of that. The cost of vegetables, the cost of fruits. I happen to live on a fairly restrictive diet, and all of the things that I want have gone up in price. Mm -hmm. What about the housing situation? Mm -hmm. My God, that is yeah. another indication of how we have inflated prices because of greed. Mm -hmm. We figured that people wanted houses, so we priced them practically out of their reach. Mm -hmm. And the numbers of foreclosures, for example, has increased even here in Hawaii, which has usually a very small foreclosure rate, supposedly because we were brought up on an oriental philosophy and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it, it affects us. Every bit of life affects us. Mm -hmm. Uh, now, 
Well, there, there are, are food riots going on all across the world right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They've just been breaking out. The price mm -hmm. of staples has been jumping up through the ceiling. It has some, I, you're the professor, but it has something to do with the globalization of the economy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the markets and these foodstuffs. It's been aggravated by the biofuel <laughs> uh, dependence mm -hmm. upon on corn, mm -hmm. you know. But um, it, it used to be that in a, in a society you could raise food and you could, whether you're trading mm -hmm. or whether mm -hmm. it's just a local economy, you raise food and you exchange it with your neighbors. Uh, for other goods and services. Now that everything is so integrated and there are these massive corporations that control everything, and when the prices fluctuate and there's a crisis in the prices, it ripples all across the country. Mm -hmm. And it's the people at the low end of the totem pole that are being screwed by this. And they're starting to rise up. I don't know if that's going to solve our problem, but it's an expression of the problem. Yeah. Well, you know, it's very, it's very interesting. In the 1920s, we had the League Against Imperialism which met among the Asian and African nations. In 1955, we had the Bandung Resolution, which covered over 20 countries of the world which were the most exploited. And because we were afraid that it, they would surpass the Western and European countries, we started doing all kinds of things like enacting NAFTA, Mm -hmm. like enacting so-called free trade. And we find now that these countries, despite Bandung mm -hmm. and the desire to live good lives, have not been able to do that. Mm -hmm. You look mm -hmm. at every African nation, you look at every Asian nation that has occurred, perhaps the only thing that we can depend upon is the fact that your South American countries are beginning to see the light, mm -hmm. and they are making changes in their political yeah, economy. Yeah, right. But, uh, you know, I mean, uh, an economist would tell you, well, uh, that's the market, supply and demand, whether it's for oil, whether it's for any other commodity, etc. And um, so the ordinary person is caught up in this uh, kind of notion. But uh, what is the role of government in this case? Like one of the things you were mentioning is pointing uh, in that government direction. Government could step in. They mm. could nationalize an industry. They could put it under PUC mm. control. Mm -hmm. You could ha have an elected PUC. Mm -hmm. But what bothers me is it's sort of like, you know, when they would say a disaster is an act of God. It's like oil prices are an act of God. Like free market is an inevitable. You know, we're, why complain? This mm -hmm. is just the workings of the system. I think this is crap mm -hmm. because we know politicians are controlled. They make decisions that affect NAFTA, the North American Free Trade Agreement, the Colombian Free Trade Agreement. These things have profound effects on American workers. And now they finally concede, even Clinton, whose husband and she supported it, they concede it was a disaster for workers mm -hmm. in many mm -hmm. parts of our country. For Mexicans, for many Mexicans, it's been a disaster yes. because of the conditions that they're laboring mm -hmm. under. Um, so I think it's important that we recognize government should step up. This yeah. whole thing, you know, the Republicans, Republicans say in Bush, mm -hmm. uh, the regime say government should be minimal. Mm -hmm. And yet they have advocated and implemented a government that invades our liberty, mm -hmm. that uh, puts us under surveillance, that mm -hmm. erodes our our rights mm -hmm. and have conducted a war in which they are blowing $10 billion a day, a week, mm -hmm. or a month, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. to in this, uh, this uh, not misadventure, uh, horrible um, massacre and uh, occupation of Iraq. Mm -hmm. This is something I think that is having an impact. Why don't they discuss not only big oil, but this military spending that is wasteful, that undermines our productive capacity? and waste so much money. Mm -hmm. The ordinary Americans, I think, know this. Yeah, right. yeah. but the, the, the thing is that, uh, you know, here we have been socialized in more ways than one in, in terms media. of the free market. Yes. Yeah, through media, Rainwater. through all, yeah, yes. well, so, yeah, let's use the, right. that uh, nice term, you know, euphemism, socialized. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the important thing is to show that what are we socialized into? We are socialized into like free markets, mm -hmm. et cetera. But if you really look, I mean, even if you um, study economics, uh, you know, regular economics, uh, you find that uh, there are free markets uh, in terms of theory. 
there are uh, oligopoly markets, monopolies, you know, and all that. And therefore, there's a lot in the just the science, uh, economic science, quote unquote, mm -hmm. is that there there are imperfections. I mean, when I used to teach economics, I would teach about externalities and externalities, those con um, you know uh, things, uh, consequences that uh, are not uh, really thought of. Uh, and mm -hmm. here you are, unintended consequences, for instance. Mm -hmm. And so, how, what do you do with those externalities, for instance, pollution or whatever? it might be well you need some kind of regulation you need something mm -hmm. to deal with it or some government policy mm -hmm. to at least uh, handle the situation to help the market along so to mm -hmm. speak because there is no free market so this as somebody put it this is uh, free market fundamentalism where there is no free mm -hmm. market people saying if there is competition there are free markets that's not true mm -hmm. you know there is antagonistic competitions there are um, the competition among uh, oligopolies and so forth, uh, but that is not the same as free market uh, in the theory that uh, is the free market theory. Well, when you look at, at what's happening, for example, to the trade union movement, and some of us have come from the trade union movement, uh, the local legislature is trying to deal with it, where the NLRA, the National Labor mm -hmm. Relations Act, has been decimated to the point where they will not mm -hmm. even have an election on the presentation of cards so that America, which at one time had at least, oh, 25% of its workers uh, mm -hmm. organized into unions, now has fallen down and Hawaii is the only place where we have over 20% mm -hmm. of our workers yes. who are organized. Yes. And the local legislature is considering that bill and I believe um, Governor Lingle says she will probably veto it. It's a bill to allow workers in a group to choose by card mm -hmm. whether or not they want to and join they, a union. Yeah. Which is, yes. uh, and, and you take that kind of power away mm -hmm. from working people who can at least determine what portion of the work environment they should control and you've taken everything away yeah. from the possibility mm -hmm. of people, consumers, mm -hmm. and workers having a, a choice as to what it is they will work under, what mm -hmm. kind of mm -hmm. conditions they will yeah. work mm -hmm. under. Yeah, so I, I think uh, all this uh, points uh, to here uh, the people believing in capitalism and then they get this raw deal that mm -hmm. they are facing and they're going to face even more of that. Mm -hmm. So. What is it that one can do or we can do to um, make things, uh, um, you know, different uh, in one sense and uh, educate ourselves and others as to uh, solutions? To, you know, we started alluding to that, but, uh, you know, you're in the Democratic Party, so what are you going to do? And the Democratic well, you, you, Party. You've, you've thrown me off because the title of this program is, is Islands in Crisis. And, right. And if we really mm. look at the crises that we're facing, whether mm. we're talking about Hawaii or talking about worldwide, mm. there's this crisis of the success of militarism mm -hmm. um, where the U.S. In some ways, the, the Republicans have gotten out of balance. Mm -hmm. They've gotten... Uh, they're not being counterbalanced by Democrats, certainly, but they've moved away from traditional understandings of a lot of things. We've abandoned the notion of balance of powers. When we were kids, we took civics, right, or, or whatever they called it when we were in school, social studies, and we learned there are three branches of government that are supposed to be, you know, co-equal and balance each other. That's been thrown away, and the Democrats have been, you know, weak in defending our constitutional rights. They should have impeached Bush or they should have investigated Bush mm -hmm. if, if we're going to support the Constitution. The free market rationale has just gone crazy. Mm -hmm. Theories that were reviewed as crackpot before mm -hmm. are now the dominant theories. Mm -hmm. I think they're in crisis. You want to talk about crisis. I think there's a crisis of neoliberal theory right mm -hmm. now where people don't believe the free market is, is going to solve all the problems. Hopefully when the people come to that conclusion, some of the more bold of the Democratic legislators will move into that space and be gravitating towards that. I don't have a lot of confidence in that, but that's one place where we can look for hope. Um, there's an environmental crisis, and we want to ignore that in a lot of ways, but leading scientists, although the Republicans and part of their craziness say we are supposed to abandon science, mm -hmm. right? But those of us who still have a little bit of trust in science uh, look at the United Nations where they are saying that we are going to have at a minimum one or two meter mm -hmm. rise in mm -hmm. sea level in mm -hmm. the next hundred years. Mm -hmm. Now, much of Oahu and neighbor islands 
is within mm -hmm. that, that thing. I don't know if you've seen the maps. Mm -hmm. They have no maps that show. <laughs> no more Waikiki. <laughs> Kailua, which is the town yeah, I grew up, the highest part of coastal Kailua is maybe six feet high. Mm -hmm. If the sea level, it doesn't, six inches of more water coming in over mm -hmm. that reef mm -hmm. is a lot more force because there's only a small amount coming mm -hmm. over the reef. Mm -hmm. You have a three foot level or one meat le level, mm -hmm. it'll be washing it'll over washing all the way over. from Kailua mm -hmm. Beach all the way into the swamp. Mm -hmm. And it'll be coming in from the swamp, I'm sorry, I'm supposed to say the marsh, right? Mm -hmm. Coming in from the marsh, going in through Coconut Grove. Mm -hmm. The areas that were, are now in Lanikai Hills or Kealo Hills will be beachfront. Mm -hmm. And that's within a, a foreseeable future. That's mm -hmm. a crisis. Mm -hmm. um, we're having trash wash up on our beaches because there's so much garbage being thrown into mm -hmm. the ocean. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, We are facing simultaneously this crisis of militarism, economic crisis that's expressing itself mm -hmm. in the housing crisis, but also in the price of, of food. Um, and there's one crisis after another. It's going to require more creativity. It's going to require more boldness mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. citizens to rise up and demand mm -hmm. more things. Mm -hmm. The politicians are not going to lead unless mm -hmm. the people lead, and then maybe some of the better ones will be dragged along. Mm -hmm. But don't expect anything from the Democrats or the Republicans. Yeah, and that, that's my point. I mean, uh, if the Democrats are not going to be able to counter the Republicans, uh, what else could be done in terms of social movements and so on. You teach a course about yes, social yeah. movements. I was just yeah. going to get to that point. Yeah. Thank you. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I agree with what Bart has said. There, uh, there are many crises that affect this island and the world and all our islands. But uh, they're hopeful signs. And it, it, even in the electoral, electoral arena, I think the uh, current campaign has elements of social movement in that Obama especially is reaching people that haven't been reached before. Mm -hmm. Whether he goes far enough is, we can argue, uh, but there are people now getting interested in politics that haven't been interested. I haven't seen the electoral politics shake up uh, or create something like a social movement before. You see social movements, of course, against global warming. You see uh, a fairly strong anti-war movement, although still unable to, to end the war. Um, and around the world you see people, you mentioned South America, but countries around the world where people are stepping up and fighting the impact of American imperialism and domination. So I think all that is, is, is hopeful, but I think that's the real work is we need to make, in Hawaii particularly, we need to make a social movement that will be more comprehensive in our approach. The union movement, I think, is an important part of it. As AQ says, they're, they're really under attack. Pacific Beach had election 2002 and another election, and uh, they've been denied the right to have a contract and represent the workers. Uh, workers, unorganized workers, are under big attack. So inflation is going up. Oil affects everything. Oil affects all these prices you're paying at the store. Mm -hmm. uh, there is beginning to be a strong reaction, as you mentioned, against neoliberalism and this idea the market will take care of everything. People who are losing their homes. Imagine three million people uh, in the last year, I think, losing their homes and maybe another three million to come. The government will bail, bail up or the Federal Reserve will bail out Bear Stearns, but what about the people? So I think there's tremendous reaction now. There's potential. But, you know, we've got to be out there and organizing yeah. and but, doing uh, it. But, yeah, the problem I see, though, that all these uh, movements, uh, first of all, they are disparate. Yes. You know, they're yes. not connected to, right. together, so they don't see what is the common goal. Uh, yes. I mean, a uh, common uh, um, effect or uh, influence or cause of these things. The other thing is that uh, they are being kind of channeled say, into the Democratic Party, Obama campaign or what have you. Obama may be better than Clinton or Clinton better than Obama in certain things, but the fact of the matter, these yeah. are sucked into something that's, uh, you know, Bart, is, who's in the Democratic Party, I'm in the Democratic Party too, uh, says that um, don't, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, put uh, your uh, bet, don't bet on the on the Democrats trying to counter the Republicans. So that's that the point. That's exactly what I said. Well, yeah, I mean. Let me be a little bit of a party okay. hack. Okay, okay, okay. okay go okay. ahead. Or being Obama I, No, I'm not a, I, <laughs> yeah. I, I have a lot of dissatisfaction with Obama. Yeah. I, I, the hope that we have is like FDR. FDR, when he first ran for office, was not running as on the basis of the New Deal. He was running as a fairly traditional politician. Mm. The social movements occurred mm -hmm. and he saw that and it, he was had a flexible enough tell. mind and there was enough agitation that he mm -hmm. was able to respond to it in a way that a normal 
politician, an American politician, doesn't. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping that Obama has that kind of possibility. Mm -hmm. But there are things that can be done. Democracy, even with its flawed, atrophied sort of form that we have in the United States, mm -hmm. takes a lot of hard work. Mm -hmm. And I think that, that I think that working in the Democratic Party and applying pressure and working on campaigns and electing people is the right way to go, but it takes a sustained effort. I mean, we're having battles going into our state convention where we're going to have pass resolutions on various things, which are not simply symbolic. They're another form of the struggle going on. And on certain key issues that I care about deeply, there are activists who are out there in the community saying, oh, we're not going to bother with the Democratic Party. So I'm going to still follow and fight on those mm -hmm. issues, mm -hmm. and I'm going to get my alcoholic kicked mm -hmm. because I don't have people backing me up. Mm -hmm. um, one of the reasons why it's important to pass these resolutions is it's a way of people coming together and expressing their outrage and expressing their concerns about the issues. Mm -hmm. Some politicians will pay attention to that. Mm -hmm. Others won't. They will find each other. Then they will go down to the legislature and they will hook up with Aquan, who will mentor them, and they will learn how to agitate there. This can't be separate from people doing their demonstrations and their community organizing. They have to be connected to each other. But if you cut out the electoral politics component of it and the legislative lobbying component of it, then you're left with nice little symbolic action in the yeah, street but, uh, and hoping that maybe yeah. there will be a revolution someday no, and the no, right no, crowd see, will emerge. But what you are assuming here is that uh, democratic politics only is Republican and Democrat mm -hmm. uh, parties. What about a third party, a fourth party, a fifth party? So the, uh, the democratic process and the electoral process are important, but why monopolize it or oligopolize it between the Republicans and the Democrats? That's why my, my point. If the Democrats, uh, you know, they've been like um, rolling over um, on s serious issues like the war, for instance, before crying out loud. You <laughs> there, know? There, there is a we structure have, that's built in. We have $10 trillion of debt. National debt. I agree. You there know. are prices so, that are not being discussed. Yeah. There you go. On the other hand, there are people who discuss yeah, them, right? Yeah. Dennis Kucinich, God bless him, discussed these what issues. What happened to him? And, yeah. and, and why did that happen? Mm. And that's what we have to look at. Mm. If he had run as a third party candidate, would that be a better thing? Ralph Nader ran as a third party candidate. And frankly, well. whether you like mm. it or not, the effect is that a third party candidate mm. is inevitably a spoiler. That's the way it is structured. Yeah. Well, Maybe at the local yeah. level you can get around that, but not at the but national level. But would that uh, well, change? Could that change in terms of social movements? Well, I mean, I'm not talking in two minutes or one year or whatever, mm -hmm. but in the long term. Sorry. Well, let, let's look at, at, at the, the labor movement. Mm -hmm. About five years ago, or probably a little more, they came out with the idea of a labor, labor. party. Mazzocchi mm. of the Oil mm. Workers Union down in Texas started the idea. Nobody thought it would work. Oh, there were some scatterings here and there. ILW was for it. I believe mm. uh, you, you, um, AFSCME was yeah, for yeah. it. Uh, a couple of unions throughout the country. But nobody really did anything about it, and that's because we've all been co-opted into the present duopoly of two-party system. We feel that it is either the Republicans or the Democrats. We never, ever really educate our people, either formally or in trade unions or in other organ peace organizations, for example, that there may be another way of altering our economic system so that there will be economic justice. Mm -hmm. You just cannot get into electoral politics without paying attention to the fact that basically people are hurting economically. That's where they hurt the most. Mm -hmm. if, there's, and, if there's a social movement or a candidate that is rooted in a social movement like that, there's nothing to stop that person from running as a Democrat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There, there are, there are Probably, I would say there are some advantages them running as a Democrat rather than outside, just in terms mm -hmm. of their own campaign. Mm -hmm. But structurally, the way it is set up, I think that, that it isn't just a false consciousness that we've bought into this duopoly. It's a structural reality. Absolutely. I think a lot of us learned that with, with mm -hmm. Nader, you know. Mm -hmm. I confess, I, I voted for Nader in 2000 in Hawaii because I knew he didn't have a chance of winning and I thought it would send a signal to the Democrats. I regret it now because I think I sent the wrong signal to Nader. Um, but a lot of people voted for him. His vote fell off in 2004 because mm -hmm. people saw what happened. They drew mm -hmm. the objective lessons of what was structured into the system. Mm -hmm. Because if he had not, I, I'm sorry, if he had not been running in 2000 and had not been on the ballot, 
then Al Gore would, would have won that election. Yeah, but shouldn't we be working, though, towards a multiplicity so that we are given more of a choice because you look at the Democrats and how they behave. Generally, they behave the same way as the Republicans do, only uh, slightly in degrees. They may say, well, maybe we should repeal the law which gives all of the tax credits to 1% of our um, uh, taxpayers. But they haven't done anything so about Hank, it. So, if you and I get together and we run John, John Whittick here, Whittick. now All what right. are the advantages of having him run as a Green or a Labor Party guy as opposed yeah. to having him run as a Democrat? Because it would take the same energy. Work. No, because we've mm. got to work all the harder mm. and educate other people to the fact that there are other ways in which economic justice can be brought mm. to the front. You see, we, we should not just buy into that and say, it, well, it's a fact of life. It's not the natural order. Uh, so I'm talking about a social movement over time trying to break that kind of structure. And I'm not talking only about Hawaii, but uh, nationally speaking. But it's you in, know. in Hawaii, but, the Democratic Party was based a lot on labor. Mm. Yes, and, it and was. And to me, the issue is also uh, shaking up the base. In mm. other words, unions, AQ knows in the past, unions, some of them advocated a social system different than what we, than what we have today. They took up economic issues. They had education within the unions. I think that has to happen again. We have to re-energize and reactivate our social base. Yes. Not only the, especially the unions, because that will affect. I sort of agree with Bart because I was third party. I was Labor Party. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been in uh, these other parties and supported Nader myself. But I think the issue is how much energy do you put in electoral politics? And if you're going to put it in, why not put it in the Democratic Party? over some uh, another vehicle that is much weaker well, well yeah <clears throat> but the social movement is, uh, is, is as, as it that. is building yeah. you know is beyond that and also will figure out what to do in terms of a strategy mm -hmm. right. that includes electoral politics right. maybe supporting certain candidates etc in the democratic party etc but not just go it's with it the all the way direction. yeah no right. yeah that's the main thing that's what i'm talking about and if this is multiplied you know th throughout the country mm -hmm. then over time you will uh, mm -hmm. find that certain structures uh, could but move, could it's change, It's not et that hard mm. to get someone elected to local office. Mm. There, mm. if you look at it carefully enough and see where are the key races, mm. you can run people and get them elected into the legislature, mm. regardless of... If, and it's more difficult to do that if you want to do it as an independent third mm. party. Mm. People or voters are much more willing to vote for a good person who's running as a Democrat on a mm. progressive platform than some uh, Jim Brewer or Renee Ng running on the Green Party thing. That's just yeah, the way it is. Yeah. You're going to get more credibility, you're going to get more votes, and it's easier to get some people elected. Now, will they be corrupted and co-opted mm -hmm. or frustrated once they get in there? Well, that, again, depends yeah. on your yeah, social movement. Right. Absolutely, yeah. But so there has to be some kind of strategy for the social movement to figure out how to operate within this particular system so you can push it to a different uh, arena, you know, a different space. Mm -hmm. And this is, I think, uh, what I'm, I'm talking about uh, in terms of the long term. But uh, let's change uh, the topic a little bit. Uh, uh, we talked about uh, islands in crisis, and we uh, alluded to some of these crises. And uh, you eloquently put it in terms of mm -hmm. the uh, environmental crisis, uh, et cetera, et cetera. OK. Uh, so uh, and I asked uh, AQ earlier about what is the legislature doing? You know, what is the legislature mm -hmm. doing? Not much, uh, your answer, basically. So what can we do? I mean, we said um, uh, social movements, etc. cetera, but uh, on uh, like today or tomorrow, today is already late, but tomorrow, you know, what can we do? I mean, to try and uh, figure out ways of uh, trying to solve this crisis that we have. I mean, people are starving, basically. Mm -hmm. People are not laid off. Yeah, people laid off. Uh, yeah. People uh, can do what they right supposed right. to, to be doing, thought that they can do in this system, mm -hmm. etc., and they still believe in this system. Well, so what do you do? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, for years I've been working on universal health care with other people in the community. And we, I know that a lot of legislators go for the idea. They figure that the present system has not worked, will not work, mm -hmm. and given the cost, of health care that you cannot 
expect a person who's just been laid off to continue it despite the COBRA uh, amendments in the law. And yet, our people say we can't do it because the doctors are supporting me. I can't go against them. They're against it. But there are doctors who are for universal health care. And just to have a committee hold a hearing on a bill which would even talk about the idea has been impossible. Mm -hmm. And so this year, what we've done is we've said, all right, let's leave it alone and let's see what happens in the next election to see whether there is a possibility of a different law written much more succinctly with a lot more details rather than a law which just gives out the idea and gives a group the possibility of working on what a universal health care plan would look like. We all know it's a problem. But we, will, we dare not do anything about it for fear of hurting this group, that mm -hmm. group, whatever group. Mm -hmm. The hospitals are saying we're not getting enough reimbursement. Doctors are leaving the state yeah. because mm -hmm. they're not getting mm -hmm. reimbursement. Rural areas are mm -hmm. not getting enough care because doctors won't mm -hmm. go there. Yeah. And uh, the, the other question, I mean, the health uh, question, uh, question is very important, especially in the presidential election. Um, Obama... Clinton, Hillary, and McCain. Mm -hmm. uh, would they be able to solve, any of them, would they be able to solve uh, the health crisis in this country, in Hawaii? Well, you know, you know actually, I mean, what they are proposing does not even take care of the problem. What they want to do is bits and pieces mm -hmm. of the problem, like taking care of children, mm -hmm. taking care of those who uh, at this particular income level and not taking care of others. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. the problem. They mm -hmm. are afraid to break out of the bonds of the usual thinking as to what a health plan should constitute. Mm -hmm. And they would tell you, well, we believe in that other thing, the one you're advocating, mm -hmm. but let's be realistic. This is not going to happen, therefore we're going to do something else, you know. Mm -hmm. But that is the kind of mentality that really gets us nowhere, you know. Well, ne That's neither um, Barack Obama nor Hillary's health care plan uh, satisfies me. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And some people try to say, oh, Hillary's is better mm -hmm. or Barack's yeah. is better. It's like, no, they're so close together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What they're trying to do is they're trying to expand or universalize health insurance run mm -hmm. through the private insurance mm -hmm. companies. They're mm -hmm. not trying to universalize mm -hmm. health care, which is a different right. thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. And as long as you have the private sector in there trying to maximize their profits, mm -hmm. trying to deny claims, mm -hmm. because that's how they make their money, spending a lot of money on advertising and on overhead and on salaries for, for mm -hmm. executive types, if you compare the overhead in the private sector versus, say, Medicare overhead, it's dramatically 3%. different. 3% mm -hmm. mm -hmm. for Medicare, mm -hmm. and, and it's more like 25% mm -hmm. or so yeah. Yeah. right in the private sector. So there are savings that are there. I think people are starting to wake up. Uh, the film Sicko was very effective, mm -hmm. I yes. think, at raising yes. people's understanding. Mm -hmm. there, one of the effects of globalization is that we're interacting more with people from other countries mm -hmm. that have national health care yes. policies. Yes. And we talk to them and they say, I don't understand what the hell's going on with your system. You're a wealthy country. Why can't you deliver health care to your people? Yeah. And we're learning. Yeah, but somebody like George Will would say, well, you know, we have the best system, health care system in the world. People come here to uh, seek, you know, uh, medicine and doctors and, uh, you know, all these kinds of high tech with, uh, in, in medicine. Therefore, the Canadian or the British system are nothing compared to But we don't to have ours. to rely on George Will. Yeah. Globalization is bringing Canadians here. We're talking to Canadians, and they're telling us that our system yeah. is crap. Yes. So you right. see, mm -hmm. uh, so I'm saying that if somebody like George Will will uh, say something like that, he has to be opposed and not like just, oh, okay, George Will said that, that's, then it must be right. So we have to be educated to the point that we can counter what George Will says or others, but I'm using him as an example. I was just going to add, crisis is the theme of your program, is also opportunity. And, mm -hmm. you know, you, uh, you see these 2,500 people that have lost their jobs all in mm -hmm. the last week or so. There are, a lot of them are going to be at Blaisdell. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, one thing is you can help the victims, and one mm -hmm. good thing that's being done is they're helping them find jobs, mm -hmm. which, which is good. But I think also there needs to be some organizing. Like when the Star Bulletin was going to be shut down, there was a community 
campaign put together with unions and people to go fight to keep it open. And Democrats. <laughs> yeah. Or in Kalama Valley, there was an effort to find homes for people. Yeah. There was also an anti-eviction mm -hmm. struggle. We may be at the time where we should be demanding more. We should be undertaking more action. We should be putting out proposals. If private companies can't do it, aloha, then have the state take it over. Mm -hmm. Workers' comp. If uh, remembering that people couldn't afford their premiums, they've yeah, set up a right, state workers' right, comp company. Right. What prevents us? In Kalapapa, they have a state gas station. The prices are much lower than what we're paying at the pump. Yeah. So why can't we demand that the state step in and and yeah. save these jobs? Well, because the, the impact in Molokai might be an opportunity to actually the, the do that. Molokai, Molokai Ranch, Ranch is yes. saying, yes. if we can't yes. do our gated community. Screw you guys, we're going to lay everybody yeah, off yeah, and we're going right. to shut down our operations. Right. But there's an opportunity there where there's a strong enough community that if they can somehow assert their rights mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and try to get control of some of that land, you're not using it, we're going to use it. Yep. But the, the community there is split. Uh, yep. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, People are held hostage. Pro-development, yeah. anti-development. Oh, yes. And the shutdown, yeah. I think, was an attack on the anti-development yeah. yeah. people. Mm -hmm. But uh, oh, yeah. the, the, the Molokai elections are an uh, excellent example and mm -hmm. happened earlier than Aloha. But, uh, you know, in terms of Aloha and uh, others, um, we often hear uh, people saying, well, um, I'm going to go to the continental U.S., they call it the mainland, mm -hmm. and get a job there. Well, buddy, let me tell you a story. <laughs> they're having problems in Ohio, so, Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. you know, oh, yes. the Midwest, the Southwest, mm -hmm. etc. There are all kinds of problems. They'll go to Vegas. Yeah, well, <laughs> Vegas is in trouble, no, man. And hit problem. a you jackpot? Know. Yeah. Huh. So can you, uh, can you see that, uh, you know, people still have those hopes? Mm -hmm. And uh, it's kind of dangerous if you up and leave and then you go there and... Um, you know, you get worse. stuck. I mean, yeah. that would be a really mm -hmm. a, a problem. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people think that, oh, okay, we can do it, you know, mm -hmm. because it's an individual response to things. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's that individual response is there because there's no other alternative collective mm -hmm. response. Well, you know, one thing that happens, I'm, I'm experiencing this, there are these high-rises that are being built mm -hmm. that are vacant. Mm -hmm. These mm -hmm. high-rises are being bought by very, very wealthy mm -hmm. people, often from Korea mm -hmm. or from even from People's Republic of China, Absolutely, yeah. from Hong Kong, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of Asian, Japanese. And these buildings have massive security, mm -hmm. and they're maybe 20% full at any one time because mm -hmm. people are only there here mm -hmm. for a month yeah. or two out mm -hmm. of the year. Mm -hmm. And these are the skyscrapers that, that, you know, they provide jobs, which I guess is good, mm -hmm. but they don't really contribute to the raising the standard of living of local people. Mm -hmm. And that's ha the kind of housing that is being provided mm -hmm. yes. for that edge of the market. Mm -hmm. it's, things are out of balance. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. I think we have to go back to sort of a wisdom that it requires there has to be more balance, and that's been abdicated. Mm -hmm. And I think the Democrats mm -hmm. have been advocating it as well as, as the Republicans. And there has to be yeah. more action. Yeah. You know, if people are going to get evicted because they got screwed mm -hmm. by their mortgage, mm -hmm. etc. Yeah. In the 30s, they used to occupy. Mm -hmm. they, oh, the yeah. sheriff would try yes. to kick them mm -hmm. out. Right. And now in some cities, they're doing 100 or 200 yeah. evictions a day. Yeah, I know. You know, so there needs to be a social right. movement right. that stops Absolutely. this Absolutely. We have a caller, uh, Judy yeah. from Kailua. You're on the air, Judy. Yes, I didn't see uh, here at the beginning of the show, but I wondered if you were able to watch the floor session at the legislature today. I did see it on Olelo. Now, either center of the house and have any comments about any of the uh, voting or development. What was it? I, uh, sorry, I couldn't hear you. Uh, could you speak up? Uh? Yes. Um, the um, legislature had their floor session today at the house and the Senate, and I wondered if uh, you, the panelists had seen it and had any comments about the bills that were voted on today? Yeah. Floor session in the House. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I wasn't I there. I were you there? No. no. Uh, yeah, none of us uh, were there. She watched on, on yeah. Olelo. Yeah, yeah. Was not, I just saw part of it on Olelo. So yeah. It was live. Mm. What interested you? Uh, well, I, I'm interested in uh, just watching uh, government, uh, interest in politics, political science. Mm. So, um, did you want to say something? Thanks, Judy. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. It's, I mean, it's nice today you can watch uh, the legislature on C-SPAN mm -hmm. or on a local channel. I was always struck. I used to work in the U.S. Congress. I was struck by how many representatives weren't there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah one, one guy talking. You know, to himself. Yeah, one guy yeah. talking and people yeah. bringing him water. Yeah. And yeah. even in the, the state... I always want to write a book, How a Bill Does Not Become a Law, <laughs> or the realities of the legislative mm -hmm. process. Mm -hmm. uh, 
you know, how you get a bill out of committee and how, mm -hmm. how they mysteriously die or disappear. Mm -hmm. But well, th that would be interesting. It's interesting. I mean, th th we do have this access so that Judy can be watching mm -hmm. on TV. And so she has an interest in what's going on in the legislature. The problem is, is, is I mean, I was down at the Capitol today. I wasn't watching the session, but you can't even park down there. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, there are all these barriers. Working people have to work during the day. The only people who can be down there building up the relationships with the legislators oh, are lobbyists. the professional yeah. lobbyists. Mm -hmm. And and I've, I've been involved in politics enough so that I have some relations with politicians, not because I've made contributions, but just I've grown up with them and stuff. Mm -hmm. But you have to develop relationships mm -hmm. in order to get the true story as to what's going on behind the scenes, whether the hearing is mm -hmm. a hearing that you really have to show up at or whether they've already mm -hmm. decided in advance right. whether right. they're going to kill it right. or whether they're going to amend it. Mm -hmm. And so you may be down there fighting for a bill that you I'm determined I'm going to be in there, I'm going to give good testimony and mobilize people. And you notice the <laughs> other side hasn't even shown up mm -hmm. because the other side has already gotten the word that don't, you don't have to worry that bill's going to be killed or it's going to be amended in such a way. Mm -hmm. There are all these barriers to working people and just mm -hmm. regular work-a-day people mm -hmm. in participating in this process. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that, that's, that's the thing. I mean, mm -hmm. where's the democracy? I mean, a lot of stuff go behind closed doors, et cetera, mm -hmm. or on the uh, golf course or whatever, yeah? And that's where things are really decided. And that is a problem. You know, the way I look at it, it's mm -hmm. a problem in, in uh, quote unquote democracy. So th these things, we have to uh, have people, uh, you know, understand those things and figure out how to counter them mm -hmm. through social movements, mm -hmm. etc., to get rid or to try and solve some of the problems that we have. Uh, we're not talking about like, uh, you know, revolution, etc., whatever, but what we are talking about is people like making the decisions that are affecting them, mm -hmm. uh, their lives uh, on a daily basis, and not leave it to X, Y, and Z politician, and hold these politicians accountable, not only in terms of every two years or every four years, in terms of local politics, but also in terms of every day, you know, bug the, the guy every day, or bug her every day if she's a senator or a representative. You know, yes. the all of that which goes on at the legislature merely confirms that which the system can abide, mm -hmm. which is individual action. We have never really, except in rare occasions, had a movement of people who say, we are for this and we're all going to come on out. Mm -hmm. When we have been able to do that, we've been able to pass legislation. In other words, the collective wisdom of a group is much more than an individual going. Mm -hmm. It may make you feel good. Oh, yeah, I, I went to say Joe Dokes and he told me, don't worry, we'll do this and, and that and the other thing. Many of us fall prey mm -hmm. to that kind of attitude. But what we need to do in terms of the so-called movement is to get people interested in it, why they should be interested, and why they should make a phone call, write a letter, send a postcard. Yeah. And if they're going to call, there yeah. is a good bill. There yeah. are a bunch of good bills. Actually, there's one good bill. We were talking about the money in, in, in con controlling the elections mm -hmm. and buying the, the campaigns. Yeah. There is the public financing bill, which has been mm -hmm. Narrowed down, narrowed so down. it just applies mm -hmm. to Big Island County Council races. Mm -hmm. But there are those of us who advocate the use of public funding in order to snip the ties between the corporate donors mm -hmm. and the candidates. Yes. Mm -hmm. And this will be a foot in the door. Mm -hmm. And there's a possibility of passing the bill this session so it applies to the Big Island County Council races. Mm -hmm. We're hoping that, it, that once it happens, people will see, see this is a good idea, we yes. like it. This is a laboratory of democracy mm -hmm. in the Big Island. The mm -hmm. politicians there have asked for it, mm -hmm. so there's no excuse for the legislators yes. not mm -hmm. to give it. And there is money that is in the special fund that is meant to help mm -hmm. contribute to campaigns, public financing campaigns oh, yes. anyways. Mm -hmm. So it's not going into the general mm -hmm. fund. It's a perfect bill. Call your legislator now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's good. I, mean, I don't know, know the number, though. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ask your legislature about the number. You know. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, yes, uh, no, you want to, yeah. Uh, that, that's a perfectly good, uh, good idea mm -hmm. of how you get a ball ro mm -hmm. the ball rolling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Voter-owned elections, go to their mm -hmm. website. Right, yes. right, yeah. Absolutely. And, and this is, well, uh, is one of the big problems mm -hmm. in American politics, uh, you know, and local politics as well. So that's the thing. So now, uh, have we solved the crisis? <laughs> <laughs>
you know, so that's, uh, I mean, we still have uh, those issues. I mean, from even before Aloha and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, ATA and Molokai Ranch, we have um, problems in education. AQ talked about the healthcare problems, and she's been advocating for a healthcare system that's for a long time, uh, welfare and so forth, yeah? But uh, now they are multiplying in, in, uh, in an environment that's not only like, uh, you know, pollution and all that, which it is, but uh, it's, it's a war environment. Mm -hmm. And here, what we have also, uh, this, is, this affects Hawaii very much, I mean, because, you know, we have been militarized in, uh, in more ways than one, uh, Pearl Harbor and the rest of it. Uh, is that, uh, you know, if uh, the, the war in Iraq continues, as even Obama, want, uh, you know, says, like, uh, we're going to uh, move out of there, but responsibly. I don't know what that means, you know. If it continues, or if McCain becomes president and he goes and bombs the hell out of Iran, I mean, we are, we would be in a very bad shape. Uh, we can bomb Iran, yeah, to the Stone Age, but would that be a solution for the problems that uh, the American people are facing? Maybe it could be a, a solution to the problems that the multinational corporations, including oil, is facing, but I'm not sure of that even, because that might uh, really m uh, make things even worse for those kinds of corporations as well. But f as far as the American people are is concerned, it's not, it doesn't behoove us to go and expand the war over there, etc. That is the on. crisis. They, 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 they're yeah. oversending the troops. They're yeah. sending them back like fourth time, mm -hmm. you know, doing the stop loss in order mm -hmm. to, to make them go back again and again mm -hmm. and again. They're, they're undermining our economy tremendously. We haven't even talked about the crisis of, of mm -hmm. the dollar falling relative to everything uh, else. Yes, right? absolutely. Right, which is part of the, the price of oil is the falling dollar. Yeah. And the euro is going up and other currencies yeah. are going up. Now the Canadian dollar is higher than the American dollar. I and mean, they're not really go. winning yeah. either. And yeah. they're losing yeah. there. Afghanistan is going to be a disaster. Mm -hmm. The Philippines, they're a similar kind of war situation. Yeah. And, the, the, and the effects I agree with, I don't think we can afford it. The effects on our own yeah. society. Obama, are, Obama wants uh, to go and if there's actionable intelligence, go and bomb West <laughs> Pakistan. I mean, what is he talking about? He has, uh, he doesn't understand what's going on there or what? You, you know, know, it's interesting how the media, though, frames all these issues. Yeah. So you're either a uh, you know, if you don't take the stand, you're yeah. uh, you're selling the country out. Right. And yeah. it, it, you know how they frame. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm always amazed at the stupidity and the dumbing down of news yeah. uh, in this country. And I see the dumbing down of schools with this no child right. left behind. I yeah. wanted to get to that briefly yeah. too. All week they're testing. Yeah. You know, my daughter yeah. is a teacher, so they take a time out from education and they test these kids. They create pressure. If the school fails, if they don't get a certain average. Then the They're solution just, is yeah. punish the school. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which is terrible. I mean, instead yeah. of giving them more funding to improve. More funding and, and, and not forcing a very But, but the whole testing uh, process is uh, flawed because, yes. I mean, uh, it assumes certain things that are not really mm -hmm. true in terms of and education. They don't relate to a lot of our right. kids. And they're yeah. cutting out the arts. And they're cutting mm -hmm. out everything yeah. that certain so, kids need mm -hmm. certain kinds of curriculum in order yeah. to respond. And it's right. not See why we need a revolution? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll talk off camera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyway, uh, we're uh, flat out of time, actually. But uh, thank you for coming, and thanks uh, to our viewers. And uh, see you next month. Aloha.